Hello everyone, it's Polar's Lights and Signals here today. So I am back with part three on my little three-parter series of my American Electric 125s. For um, anyone who is newer to the, my channel and actually uh, clicked on this video, um, this is a three-parter and this is a part three, so if you guys haven't yet, um, please go check out part one of uh, my Mercury Vapor 125. And then please uh, feel free to watch part two of my high pressure sodium 125. It's not as exciting, but um, I do uh, recommend that you guys go and watch it just so you guys have a little bit of continuity um, leading up to this video. So in part two, at the end of the video, I mentioned that we'd be looking at this uh, Pulse Start American Electric 125 right here. So to finish off this wonderful series, let me go ahead and lay it down and we can start to take a look at it. So right here is my 2018 320 watt Pulse Start American Electric 125. So if you guys are looking pretty closely at this fixture right now, you'll notice that it looks very shiny and uh, pretty clean. And that's because um, this is a brand new uh, fixture. Um, this is a new old stock fixture that was purchased off of eBay. Um, I don't know if this person still has any left for sale. Um, but this person, um, I don't know where he got them from. He must have gotten them from a warehouse or somewhere that was cleaning out some of their extra stock because he had at least about 20 plus of these. And since I really do like the 125, um, I went ahead and actually bought this fixture. Um, and I'm actually glad I did because the, the price was actually really good on this thing. And I'm sure now, um, now that the 125 has been discontinued, the price on these are going to start going up because of uh, greedy people. So I'm glad I bought it when I did. But yeah, this is a uh, this is a new old stock fixture. Um, I have not really done anything with this fixture since I've gotten it um, up until now, really. So it's uh, it came with the box, which I did already unbox it and stuff. And I should have not have done that, as I could have made this video a lot more interesting. But that's okay. Um, this fixture, um, yeah, like I said, I haven't done anything with it yet. I've just looked at it and kind of tinkered around with it. Um, I haven't even ran this fixture yet. So that goes to show that I have not really done anything with this fixture. So yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to look at it because since I haven't done a lot of, uh, with this fixture yet, I don't really entirely know what's on the inside of it. But yeah, towards uh, towards the end of uh, American Electric's run, um, th pretty much throughout, uh, well, last decade now, because it's 2022, uh, American Electric uh, had a lot of pulse start stuff for sale um and i actually have a, a american electric 115 pulse start fixture that i actually did a video on and that fixture um is also a 2018 fixture as well please go check that out but yeah this is actually my second uh, pulse start fixture in my collection wait a second did i just say that the american electric 125 is my second pulse start fixture in my collection uh, are we forgetting about this fixture right here? Please go check out this video. I actually really love Pulse Start, and that's kind of why I bought this. I, I love Pulse Start. It's, it's very new, and it's very unique, because Pulse Start can run on a lot of different wattages, and there's weird wattages, too. So, like, this one's a 320, and it, it, de it definitely is a unique wattage. But there's other ones, of course, like 310. There's 200 watts um, Pulse Start that these came in. And it's just, uh, it, the numbers vary. There's even like different numbers in the 400s. There's a couple numbers in the 600s and in the 1000s and the 800s. It's it's crazy. So I love Paul Start stuff a lot. And the light it gets out is just clean. So I'm guessing today uh, when we go ahead and start uh, warm this fixture up, it'll be clean. But yeah, enough talking. Um, let's go ahead and start taking a look at this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera up here. Now, I will, um, I don't want to be repetitive, but, um, again, this 125 in design is pretty much the same as the high pressure sodium one, um, that I, uh, did a video in the last part. Um, nothing's different on this. This is literally the same body shell. Obviously, it's brand new, so, um, what I can do at least is at least talk about the paintwork. Now, like I said, uh, the newer American Electric stuff used a cooked-on paint, and... As nice as it looks brand new, um, it never really lasted very long. But uh, looking at this fixture uh, while it's brand new, yeah, uh, the paint is actually not really bad. It's applied well. I know some of the Thomas and Bet stuff had poorly applied paint. But yeah, for the most part, the paint's applied fine. 
But I do worry about stuff like this. Like, see that this is a mold imperfection in the cast aluminum. And, uh, you know, if, if water gets caught in that, which it can, because there actually is an exposed spot. It's a little, well, actually, you can see it. It looks like a little scratch. There's an exposed spot. So that's actually a water trap right there for uh, water to get trapped in here and then start corroding away at this. So as beautiful as this looks from a distance, you can already see um, there are some minor issues. And one thing I, I, I kind of don't like about the cooked on paint with these newer ones. I love the shininess of it, but it, it seems like it's too thick. I, I, I don't entirely know, but like when the paint is applied over details, it's very, uh, they're all kind of washed out. And even with the, uh, with the repaint I did on this one, it's still the same because I still left some of the original paint on that. But yeah, a lot of the details just seem really washed out. They, they apply it too thick, but um, yeah. But yeah, as I'm painting around, um, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go too crazy, but you can see this fixture is pretty much the same as my high pressure sodium one. All the blah blah is there on the bottom. You got the same exact latch on the front. You got your spot for your level gauge. Of course, there's your uh, heat sink venting on the top. It's the same. And this detailing is all the same too. So it's the same body shell. So I'm sure for um, everyone who's already watched, um, yeah, it's it's no different than the high pressure sodium one. And this is um, one thing that's probably a little bit different on the outer housing is the photocell socket. So let me go ahead and try to take this off. Okay, cool, it worked. So I got um, this isn't even the right day. I got to put a, get a different one. But um, this is a 2014 uh, Fisher Pierce uh, SunTech photocell. Um, I actually have uh, 2018 versions of these in a uh, gray, blue, and black. So I'm trying to figure out. Uh, what color I want to choose. I think blue would look the prettiest just because it really sticks out. Um, actually, I could leave that guys to you. Um, I, like I said, I have these in blue, black, and gray uh, for 2018 um, and 2018 versions of these. So uh, if anyone uh, wants to give me some recommendations on what color I should uh, photo cell I should try to put on here, please, please feel free to let me know. But yeah, anyway, so here's the photo cell socket. Now, with my uh, high pressure sodium one, of course, the photocell socket wasn't original. But this one um, came with a photocell socket. I have no idea uh, what this fixture was um, intended to be, uh, where this fixture was intended to be installed, you know, but um, this did come photocell equipped. So, one thing that's cool is I can actually show you uh, what the later photocell sockets were like. So, when Thomas and Beth's, uh, of course, uh, partnership with American Electric in the late 90s, they changed how the photocell socket. Um, was assembled. So instead of having a screw that you would use to have a tightening clamp, um, there's actually a spring uh, mechanism clamp, uh, clip on the inside of the housing that pretty much keeps this down. As you can see, if when I lift it up, it just pulls it back down. So with this photo cell, all you got to do is uh, get it into the position you want. So here's North. So I'm actually going to put North a little bit down. So you just lift up on it, you can twist it, and then you set it back down. So that's uh, pretty much how you adjust it, and I'll just show you again, lift it up, pretty much turn it in any way you want. The only downfall with these, and I, I don't like this type of style, and GE did this too, uh, luckily Cooper didn't, but um, when you go to plug in your photo cell, if you have a really good, sometimes if you have a photo cell with really good contacts, sometimes, actually, be hard to put on like there we go so i got it i got it twisted over but when i want to go take it off i gotta press down on the photo cell just to pull it out and what can happen is it can be a pain in the butt to work on these Ugh, there we go so i'm not a fan of this at all um american electric did this and ge actually did this for a very long time too i was never a fan of these lift and uh twist photo cell sockets i prefer the ones that have the um, clips, that uh, the little uh, screw clamps on the bottom to secure it, they're a million times better. And they last because, well, the photo cell is covering up the top of the screw. So the screw is insulated by the bottom of the photo cell and it's not corroding or rusting it. So yeah, um, I don't, I, I guess this is much cheaper to make these uh, photo cells like this, but 
I don't know. I don't like it that much. But uh, like the older American Electric photo cells, it still has a lot of the labeling on it. It does not say American Electric, unfortunately, this time around. But it says Point Arrow North. And you can see it still has all the ratings on it. And uh, yeah, so you can see on for this one, it says lift and twist to adjust. So yep, just like I described. So this one's a little different. Um, it doesn't say, unfortunately, American Electric on it. But it still has all the wonderful uh, the wonderful little instruction there and all the uh, electrical ratings. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, I'm glad they uh, still kept that detail. But yeah, pretty much uh, the outside of the fixture is the same. So... Um, let's go ahead. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, open this fixture up. I'm not going to show you guys how to open it. I'm sure you guys know by now. So let's just go ahead and get straight into this. All right. So I got the door off. I'll just kind of give you a quick view of the inside. Again, there's really nothing to go over. There's the level gauge. Here is the NEMA sticker for it. You can see it says 32. Um, the NEMA sticker is not applied very nicely. As you can see, it's at an angle. And uh, I don't know why, but there is an air bubble right here, and there actually is a scratch. You can, I mean, you can see it. There's a scratch on both sides, so the name sticker is not perfect. And yeah, the door is very basic. This has got your same latch. Of course, you got the tab to undo the glass. I will talk about the glass here, though. The glass is actually very interesting. This is the one thing I actually like about this later model so let me get the glass out and show you guys uh, how different this glass is compared to my old, uh, other ones so right off the bat um this might look like a generic piece of glass american electric glass and it is but here is the twist if we look at the rim which i need to tilt the camera up for that look how big the lettering is you see those See it? See that the lettering is huge, and it's funny because you actually can see it uh, when the reflect uh, the refractor is up in the fixture. But yeah, you can see in huge letters it says American Electric. Of course, you have your uh, number there. It still says the twenty five dash zero zero. So pretty interesting. So yeah, you have that just that the, the labeling and the lettering is huge, and you can see it says Holofane. And then you got the glass uh, model number there, and Dural. So yeah, you can see that lettering, it's like bigger, and I have no idea as to why um, Hall of Fame did that. It looks like they actually made a slight redesign on this glass, not just with the lettering, but here's something I want to note. So right here on the side, you can kind of see a line. Like hear that like I'm actually stroking it so there's actually uh, some of the details actually pop out for some reason the glass for the most part is pretty much the same as the older the older versions but yeah they got like these weird lines here now and it's the same way on the other side all the newer 125s are like this too it's I don't know the the this glass is different the only thing I do not like about this glass though and um, this is going to sound a little repetitive as well, is that it's a little bit low quality. Actually, let me take that back. It's uh, very low quality. <laughs> um, it's not as bad, of course, as the Cooper uh, Westinghouse style glass uh, for the OV25 that I've talked about numerous amounts of times. But look here, you can see a lot of air bubbles. You can see it's very hazy. It's it's not it's not as nice looking. I will say though there are absolutely despite the haziness and the air bubbles, there are absolutely zero wrinkles. A lot of newer glass has that. It has that fogginess and those wrinkles in the glass like it's fracturing, but you know, that's just how crappy the how crappily the mold was made. But no, this this has absolutely no wrinkles on it. So yeah, it's actually pretty nice, but, like, it's still not perfect. I mean, like, even look, I just noticed this. Like, look right here. You can just see material in the glass. Uh, you can't really see it on the front. There, you can see on the inside. You can just see little white spots. And that's just stuff that got into the mold. So, and this is kind of like a recycled style glass, because one thing I've noticed with the newer refractors is that they have a yellowish tint to them. So yeah, this is uh, cheaper glass. That's not the same good glass. But um, yeah, other than that, I mean, this glass is okay. 
it's not the greatest, but I do like that unique lettering on it. I think those nice big letters are actually kind of cool, and some of that extra line det detail, actually, you can see it right there. That nice little reflection that's popping up on camera, you can see that there, right there, that nice line. There's a couple others, too, like I was just pointing out, but yeah. So, um, I don't know why Holofane uh, redesigned this glass, and I actually would like to know when they did this, because um, that'd be really interesting to know. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. But um, let's, let me go ahead now and uh, put this aside, and let's go ahead and look at the inside of the fixture. Alright, so I'm not going to go too crazy with the inside of the fixture, but I'll just kind of point out some of the simple things. Here's your hinge, same thing as the last fixture. I got the... Uh, this has the four bolt clamp system, and you can see it's just a nice piece of stainless steel. Uh, the capacitor, which um, for some reason I have uh, dis disconnected this. Like I said, I did mess with this. You can see the capacitor here. It's a, uh, I don't know who it's made by, but it's a really uh, weird capacitor. It's long and metal, mostly they're plastic, but yeah, you can see it's strapped down like a, uh, Pretty much how American Electric's always done their capacitors. And you got your terminal block here. It's the same plastic uh, terminal block. Of course, some um, of these uh, newer ones, I don't know if they'll strip out easily or not. But yeah, you got your ground screw. And yeah, just those little extra attachment points. So yeah, this is the um, a ballast assembly. So like I said, this is a 320 watt pulse start fixture. So. With Pulse Start, you need an igniter. It's pretty much like high pressure sodium, and that's why they can get this in so many different wattages, I guess. But yeah, you can see the igniter here. Um, it just looks pretty generic. Uh, I don't really know anything about it, but yeah. Even though this ballast is, uh, can do uh, run a unique type of light, um, I will say, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty generic Pulse Start ballast. Nothing special. You just It's just a multi-tap, and you got your wires for your... Uh, for, uh, for wiring it up to your cap and lamp and stuff, so yeah. Nothing too exciting, but it's all nice. I mean, I have the same feelings on this ballast as I do with my high pressure sodium 125. It's, it's, the stuff's pretty nice, but it's, it's not really exciting or anything. I mean, you can see it's just mounted down to the same bracket, so yeah. But one thing we can look at, and this is uh, one thing that's really cool, is the wiring diagram you can see on here it's super cool to actually see fixture uh, a fixture uh, with the wiring diagram a lot of my older ones don't have any of the sickering left and I wish I could see them in older fixtures but yeah and you got your little uh, warning there for operation and yeah that's pretty much it um, nothing in here is really changed other than the ballast assembly uh, it's made for a different type of lamp and here is the light socket. I can kind of get a close up on this. It's the same as my high pressure sodium uh, 125. You got the uh, three positions for uh, vertical adjustment. And then for horizontal adjustment, you got those little steps back there and you just got to unscrew it. Um, I think my other one actually had one screw. I'm not sure if I uh, remember correctly, but yeah, it's the same as my other one. You just got to undo the screws here for backward movement, which I actually haven't touched yet. I haven't really, like I said, I've only tinkered around and just looked inside this thing. I have not, other than that cap, I haven't really done anything in here. So yeah, I mean, I guess there, yeah, first thoughts, real thoughts on the inside of this fixture. It's, it's pretty good. It's not that bad. But yeah, and here's the bottom of the photo cell. You can see that little uh, clamp thing that kind of helps keep the photo cell pressed down. So pretty nice, and yeah, and then coming up into the reflector area, you can see it's pretty much the same as my other 125. The reflector is the exact same pressed aluminum reflector. It is uh, no different at all than my other ones, and of course to get it out, you just unscrew it. So yeah, there are divots in it. Hmm. Don't know why. But uh, one thing we can look at, which is kind of nice in here, is the stickering. So you can see it says American Electric Lighting, 320 watt. Um, it says metal halide. Um, sometimes uh, companies don't really label these correctly, but that should say uh, Pulse Start Metal Halide. But yeah, you can see the lamp type and all the voltages that it can do. And, of course, the date. So this, this uh, 125 here is from April the 4th, 
2018, so really cool. And now let's see, what's this? Just a warning sticker. And yeah, it pretty much just says, uh, this ballast kit is to be used with pulse start lamps. No other lamp can go in this fixture. Maybe a high pressure sodium lamp, but they don't make 320 watt high pressure sodium lamps. So yeah. And let me go ahead and show you guys the lamp that I got for this fixture. So I went on a thousand bulbs. It's a really good website that sells a lot of different types of lights and uh, light bulbs. And I went ahead and bought this plus right, a 320 watt pulse start lamp, which I have just came in the mail today, which is actually why this video um, didn't get a premiere, uh, a premiere uh, thing on YouTube. <laughs> so yeah. So let me look at this. So yeah, here, uh, here's the box. It's kind of interesting actually to look at the box. So Plus Right made a lot of different uh, wattage lamps. So you can see it's Plus Right Protective Pulse Start Metal Halide. Because a Pulse Start Metal Halide can explode. Like the bulb can pew. So yeah, that's why they have that arc, uh, arc tube uh, protector. You can see that little glass tube around that. So yeah. Yeah, here's some... Uh, some uh, wattages they made for their lamps. So we got 50, 70, 100, 150, wow. Oh yeah, that's right. I got a 150 in my uh, New York City OVZ. I actually forgot about that wattage. <laughs> that's kind of funny. They got 175, that's my uh, 115 that has that. So you got 200 watts, just like I mentioned. You got 250 and then uh, 320, which this fixture uses. And you even got a 350. And then you got, of course, 400 and 1,000. But there are other pulse start wattages that I actually just learned about. There's actually 140 watts pulse start, and then there's actually a 825 pulse start. And there's a couple in the 700s as well that pulse start does. But yeah, so nothing else to see in the box. It's just basic information. But yeah, here is the lamp. So this is a pulse start lamp. And I went ahead, um, a lot of these uh, 320 watt pulse start lamps, they actually ha um, they actually make a smaller version, so they're the size of a 175 bulb. It's like a, I don't know what the bulb type is, but this is like a BT37. So this one right here is more like a mercury vapor uh, sized lamp, which is perfect for uh, this fixture because um, this has a nice big reflector and this lamp needs to stick out far enough. But you can see, you can see it says plus right. 320 watts uh, power strike and it's a, this bulb is an M132 let's see so um, this sticker is also wrong this is says M154 so um, yeah I think uh, a 154 is actually a 400 watt lamp so that is actually wrong let's take a look at our box and see what it says M154, 400. Oh no, that's for uh, one, uh, 135. Okay. Um, I don't know, but this is made for this fixture. So yeah, it's a very nice high quality bulb. Let's go ahead and put it in. And I'm glad I got it in this size. I will say if any of you guys uh, have uh, ever get any of these Pulse Start 125s, try to get it in this bigger size because um, I don't know what those bulb sizes are called, but they make the cram lamp versions of these for high bay fixtures. And um, if you get that, you can't really adjust your socket forward enough to get it center, I don't think. So yeah, try to get these uh, in this size, as it'll uh, give you the best light distribution. I still gotta push it forward, it's, you can see it's a little bit back. But yeah. Anyway, uh, with that in there, let me go ahead and plug this thing in so we can watch it warm up. Alrighty, so I got my 125 set up here, and that photo cell, of course, like my other two, works really wonderfully. So let me go ahead and shut some blinds now, so that we can uh, get this thing to turn on. So this is my 2018 American Electric 125, 320 watts, pulse start metal feline in one... Two, three. Okay. Again, this is not bright enough, or it's dark enough, excuse me, so I'll put some tape on it. 
There we go. All right. Oh man, these super sensitive photo cells are messing me up. I do like Paul Start when it starts up. It has a very nice uh, greenish, uh, like a very light green color. It's like lighter than mercury, mercury vapor almost. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead now and watch this warm up. Alrighty, so we are at full brightness. Man, this thing is just super, super bright. Um, there's one thing I actually like about Pulse Start is the wonderful light it gives off. You can just see on camera how white it is. When it comes to mercury vapor, you know, it appears very green on camera, and high pressure sodium pretty much appears how it normally looks. But this Pulse Start stuff is completely, uh, you're, you're, well, the color you're seeing it give off right now is what you see in real life. It's a nice, beautiful, clean white light. I don't know why it's so clean like it is, but it is absolutely beautiful. And oh my gosh, this thing is like daylight. So let me go ahead and bring the camera forward. And we can just kind of get a little view. Let me, let me get on it. Wow, look how bright this is. Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, you probably can see the arc too, but you can't because the glass is foggy, but eh, it's pretty though. I mean, look. And you can see it's just white light. If I look down here, you can see the NEMA sticker that was applied not so very well. Of course, the spot for your level, and if you were to order one. Yeah, even though it's the same, it's pretty nice. I do like it. I really like the white light these give off. Pulse Start is so cool. It's sad that it came out so late in time, but I really like Pulse Start fixtures. In here, it's a not very loud. Just a nice little tiny hum. This uh, this glass is pretty warm. I do like that unique glass. Let's see if we can see some of that lettering up there. And yeah, maybe not. It might be tucked up a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's a uh, that's pretty much it. It's really a uh, nothing else to see. Alrighty, so that ends uh, part three of uh, my American Electric uh, 125s that I have in my collection. I really hope you guys enjoyed this three-parter. Um, I was really happy to uh, review all these fixtures um, for you guys. I will say it was kind of a lot of work uh, trying to get all the videos compiled together. Um, I actually fell a little behind on doing this, but I'm glad I at least got it out. And um, I hope you guys um, feel a lot happier now that you've seen these fixtures. Because um, I know there's a lot of uh, collectors that probably really badly want a 125. Um, and I just haven't gotten one yet. Because I know a lot of people just aren't able to get this stuff as easily as some others. So uh, hopefully this uh, video made you guys, uh, made those those people happy. And it definitely made me happy. Um, it was kind of nice actually uh, to go through some variants, uh, different variants of the 125. I will say uh, this Mercury one uh, makes me very, very happy. And uh, even though this high pressure sodium one's pretty generic, um, I got this fixture a long time ago. So I had a little bit of, uh, it was a little bit nostalgic going over it. And I also made uh, some quick new discoveries in this one. So uh, the Pulse Start one here in the middle. So yeah. Um, I really, uh, really did enjoy doing this video. Now that I've reviewed uh, all three of these 125s, I'd actually like to know uh, from you guys uh, which 125 you guys like the best. Um, personally, I like the Mercury Vapor one the best. That is my favorite. And I'd say the Pulse Start one is probably my second favorite. And then the High Pressure Sodium one's my third. But I know everyone's a little bit different. So yeah, I'd actually like to know uh, which one you're, uh, which 125 you guys like the best. So uh, please 
feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please add a like down below as well as that really helps my videos. And yeah, for any new subscribers, uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of videos on street lighting and I do some traffic signal stuff and a couple other minor things here and there and every now and then. But yeah, my main focus is pretty much street lights because that is what I like the best. So yeah, it's a shame the 125 has been discontinued, but I will definitely do my best to uh, preserve and cherish these ones I have. For uh, anyone who uh, wants one um, pretty badly, I would go ahead and go to the American Electric website and try to contact American Electric Lighting. Um, I know American Electric Lighting has a lot of these fixtures um, that they're trying to um, sell off as they are, of course, discontinued now. And I bet they have some uh, neat pulse start fixtures probably still in stock that they are trying to get rid of. So. I encourage everyone as of right now, if you guys want to preserve some of these, to please just contact American Electric um, either by phone or email and just see if you got, if any of you guys can try to possibly buy off the rest of their stock because I'm sure they have some really nice stuff left and it'd be really cool to see that stuff get preserved. I'm sure they have a lot of high pressure sodium stuff, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if they had some unique stuff like uh, this pulse start fixture here. And it actually would be kind of cool to uh, have some uh, 2022 uh, versions preserved as they are some of the last ones. So yeah, I, please, if you guys, if any of you guys are able to, just contact American Electric, tell them you're interested in buying these fixtures. And um, from what I've heard, um, these fixtures are brand new, um, are usually a couple hundred dollars or a few hundred dollars, but as of right now, uh, there's the stuff that they try to get rid of, I think is like sold extremely cheap and it's actually like affordable. So I really do encourage people to try to contact them and get what you can. But um, with that said, um, I hope you guys um, enjoyed this uh, three part series I did. Um, next month, I am going to be very busy. I am going to be uh, on a vacation. So uh, for the next uh, few weeks, you guys might not see me for a little while. But um, please stay subscribed and please uh, stay up to date with my channel and I will try to keep you guys updated as well with uh, my community posts. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.